sponsors of this conference. Um, I'm really honored to be here. Very nervous too. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Chihon's diagram and how to force to get many values um, in the diagram. Of course. Um, I will talk mainly about two methods. Maybe the later I will, I will not have much time to do it, but at least I will explain it like roughly what it is. But I will focus most of what I did on my PhD thesis. Okay, so I will briefly introduce uh, the cardinals in Chihon's diagram. Uh, let me make, me make this work. Okay, yeah. So in general, if you have a set and, a, and an ideal I of subsets of the set X, you can define the additivity of I, which is the less size of a family of objects in ideal, which union is not in the ideal. You can define the covering, which is the less size of a family of objects of the ideal that can cover the space X. The uniformity of the ideal, which is the less size of a subset of X, which is not in the ideal. And finally, the cofinality of the ideal, which is the less size of a cofinal subfamily of the ideal with respect to the subset relation. So in particular, for Chihon's diagram, we look at the space of the real numbers. You can think about, I don't know, Cantor space or Bayer space. All of them will give like the same values for the cardinal invariants. And you can look at, well, we're going to look at the Meager ideal, the ideal of meager subsets of the reals, and the ideal of the measure zero subsets of the reals. Well, Lebesgue measure zero, of course. So to introduce some other invariants, uh, we define the following relations. So for f and g functions from omega to the omega, we say that f is dominated by g if and only if f of n is less than or equal to g of n for uh, almost all the natural numbers. So for this relation, we define what is a dominating family. A set of reals is a dominating family if any real of the space is dominated by some member of the family. With this, we define the following cardinal invariants. The bounding number, which is the less size of a family of reals that cannot be bounded above by some real with this relation. And the dual, the dominating number d, which is the less size of a dominating family. As a cardinal invariant, we can also take the continuum, the size of the space of real numbers, as a cardinal invariant as well. So the Chihon's diagram is ordered by this. So I didn't draw arrows, so I have to say that any uh, horizontal line represents a less than equal from left to right, and every vertical line represents a less than equal from a bottom to top. Right. So this is the diagram of the possible probable inequalities in CFC. Any other inequality cannot be proved in this diagram. And this was, of course, uh, given by the forcing methods. Okay, and if this is what I refer by completeness, that no other inequality can be proved. Additionally, we had also this characterization of the additivity of meager and the co cofinality of meager. So what do we know about separating? So mainly for the models, for example, for the models for completeness, we know that for any uh, configuration that is consistent with the diagram, you can construct a model where the cardinal stakes Aleph 1 and Aleph 2 values. Most of these techniques are given using uh, countable support iteration of proper, uh, of proper posits. Okay. But now we, in my work, I when uh, I am very interested in obtaining models when you can get much more different values for Chihon's diagram. So which techniques do we have? So uh, so using constable support iterations of proper forcings only allows the continuum to be a left two, then this is discarded because it doesn't allow three or more values. So one of the easy techniques we have is using finite support iteration of CCC posits. But the main problem is that as fin in finite support iterations, we are always at Cohen reals at <coughs> limit stages. Then depending on the length of the iteration, if the length of the iteration ha is mu, okay, and it's uncountable, then the uniformity of meager will always be smaller than the covering of meager. So this is the, the restriction there. So it means that using finite support iteration, everything that is in the 
left side will be smaller than everything that is in the, in the right side. Okay? So if you want to avoid this, then you, you need other new techniques. Um, I'm going to talk about here only about finite support iteration techniques. There are other techniques are not very well known about separating the uh, cardinals in Chihon's diagram. I think only one that is known without using finite support iteration is the following. So this is a result by Arthur Fisher, Gosser, Kellner, and Shela. When the diagram is can be separated like this, okay? So here, um, lambda one and lambda two, well, just have to be different. One can be bigger than the other, it doesn't matter, but then lambda three will be above them and lambda four will be, of course, strictly above. So this is very nice because here, well, you can get that the uniformity of bigger, I the of meager is bigger than the covering of meager, which is the back, the what we cannot achieve using finite super iteration, and also it separates a lot in the right hand side of the diagram, which is a very big challenge. So regarding to this, uh, with finite super iteration, it's very easy to separate on the left hand side. For example, using techniques from Brendle, Yud, and Shelah, we can separate the diagram like this, like very separated in the left-hand side. So I'm going to introduce some theory, especially about preservation properties, and explain briefly how to obtain this uh, consistency result, and use the same theory to get some other results, particularly separating on the right-hand side, which is the real challenge in this framework. Okay, so to get to the general theory, let's assume the following. So let's take X and Y to uncountable Polish spaces, well, a space of reals, which has the form, can be written as products of countable discrete uh, spaces. I forgot to say that, well, most of them has to have size at least two as well. So you can think about X and Y, for example, only on omega to the omega. You, you can just keep that in mind and, it, and I think it's enough. Now we look at a relation between objects of X and Y, a relation which, which is F sigma in the product, such that for any object in Y, the set of objects in X that are, I will say, dominated by Y is meager. Yes? One typical example is the one that I gave before, the relation less than equal star in omega to the omega. It satisfies this. But, the, but somehow uh, there is a generalization of this framework. Okay. So we consider the cardinals related to this relation. So B squared will be the less size of a family of objects in X that cannot be bounded by a single object from Y. And dually, the square will be the version of the dominating number, which says that any family from X can be dominated by some member of Y, of, yes, of, of D, sorry, of the dominating family. Okay. So now is because we have this requirement that, in that the set of objects dominated by a single y is meager. This will give this two inequalities because every non-meager set cannot be bounded because of the restriction. And dually, any dominating family will cover all the reals. I think uh, looking at this. So also it gives, OK, cardinals that are on the left and on the right of the dark. So for preservation, we are going to consider more uh, strong families, not only bounded, but also with additional properties. So for this, we fix a regular uncountable theta. And for a family of reals in X, we say that it is theta unbounded, if and only if satisfies these two requirements. First, that it has size bigger than or equal than theta, and that the set of objects of from F that are dominated by a single Y is a small for every y in, in y in the codomain. Okay? This is an, a strongly version of unbounded. Of course, any unbounded family 
uh, any theta unbounded family is unbounded, so therefore we have this inequality. And dually, a an theta unbounded family destroys a small set of uh, reals that try to be a dominating family. So if you have a small set of y's, right, this a small set of y's cannot be dominating, so that's why the a square will be bigger than or equal than theta. So the objective for a uh, given many values in Chihon's diagram will be to preserve some type of family like this from the ground model in order to have an upper bound for some cardinal invariant and also a lower bound for the dual. And more or less it will be worked like this. Well, I first give some examples. So I already talked about the relation less than or equal star and of course the corresponding invariants is what you know. So for other relation, we can consider in omega to the omega uh, e eventually different. So of course, two x is eventually different from y if they are different for almost all the natural numbers. So by a result of Bartoczynski, uh, the b of that relation is the uniformity of Miger, and d of that relation is the dual the covering. Okay, it's a characterization. Also, we can consider the same relation, but for the space of reals that are below some fixed function h, okay? We con can consider the same um, eventually different relation. And for this, we get some nice way to preserve the covering of null and the uniformity of null. In the sense that if, the, if for example, h is 2 to the i, for example, if the sum is finite, then the, the B cardinal bounds above the covering of null and the D cardinal bounds the uniformity of null below. So this cardinal can be used to preserve some value of the covering of null when you go through iterations. Okay. So now, uh, given some definitions concerning this, so if we have an arbitrary set, or let's say a model of CFC, we say that that real from the domain X is unbounded over A if and only if no real that belongs to this set or model A can be can bound this object X. A typical example is a coin real, right? If we have a coin real over B, the coin real will be unbounded over B, no matter which relation is this. It's because of this requirement that the uh, set of reals dominated by a single real is meager. Okay. So that's why coin reals are always unbounded, and this will be a key part of this work here. So extending this, now if we have a, well, a theta regular uncountable fix, and we have a, a finite support iteration of length theta using non-trivial CCC posets, then of course we know that at limit stages we are adding coin reals. So these coin reals that we add at limit stages, actually they become a theta unbounded family. So the reason of this is that if you have a small set of reals from y, a, a set of size less than theta, then as your iteration is of length theta, then these reals are already, uh, well, appear already in an intermediate step, and then in the next limited step ahead, there will be a coin real that cannot be dominated by the reals from where you started. So that's why you have a theta unbounded family and it has size theta, okay? So even the iteration produce uh, these kind of families for you, and the idea is that, okay, you go to some step of your iteration and you produce this family, and then further you preserve it in order to get some value of the cardinal invariant you want. And then this, uh, here it comes the property for preservation. So, for a posit, for a forcing notion, we say that a forcing is theta good if it satisfies this, okay? I'm not gonna read this as I'm not going to use this directly. I'm just gonna say what is the implication of being theta good with respect to the relation. And when and to abbreviate, I will just say good when theta is equal to LF1. This will be the case if we want to preserve some, car some cardinal equal to LF1, okay? So now what happens here? So whatever this property is, it always preserves uh, unbounded families of this type. So if you have a theta good posit, it will be always preserve theta unbounded families from the ground model. 
whenever theta is an irregular cardinal that is above, uh, sorry, a nu is a regular cardinal that is above theta, okay? So it means that these properties uh, helps to preserve um, this type of unbounded families. And the key fact here from Yudan Shela, of course, here is generalized, but the proof is the same, is that uh, this property of being theta good is preserved through finite support iterations that are theta cc, okay? Well, well from theta iteration of theta cc posets. In particular, from CCC posets, which is what I'm going to use here in the applications. So then this property is good as it is preserved through finite super iterations. And then we can have the following. So now if we have a fixed theta and we have some lambda, right? Uh, some delta, sorry. An, or, an ordinal, la a large ordinal. I think I should say it has, I, I forgot to say that this should must have, uh, no, 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 sorry, no. no. No additional requirement, only bigger than equal than theta. And an iteration of length theta. An iteration, a finite super iteration using the only theta good CCC posits. So then, as explained at the theta stage, if you go to the theta stage, you produce there a, uh, or well, I will just say it in general. So let's say if you have a regular nu, which is between theta and delta, any regular, right? So when you go to the new stage of the iteration, then in the new stage, we, you generate a new unbounded family. And this new unbounded family is preserved ahead uh, on the rest of the iteration because the forcings that you are using are preserving, right? And it's, pre and it's also preserved at limit stages. So then, as a corollary, this coin, this coin real added at these previous stages will form a new unbounded family of size nu. So it means that then in the final extension, for any regular between theta and, la and delta, there will be a new unbounded family of size nu, right? So then what does it mean? So as we have a theta unbounded family, then the B number will be less than or equal than theta in the final extension. And also as, as we have such a unbounded family for any, for any nu uh, below delta, any nu regular, then as the dominating will be bigger than or equal than all those, those nu's, then approximate, the, then taking the limit in case that this cardinality is singular, then you get this inequality. You get that the D will be larger than the size of the iteration, the size of the length of the iteration. So then in this way, you will get um, values in Chihon's diagram, okay? So just as, the, as example uh, of, a go of good posets, any small poset will be good. So in particular, co co-enforcing is always good, no matter what, the, what relation you use. So now after introducing this theory, let me then talk about the, I'm repeating the same slide, okay? So let's see how to get something like this. So now the theory works pretty well for that. The idea then for force this configuration in Shihon's diagram is that, okay, we do a finite support iteration of length lambda, okay, which will be the continuum at the end. And then we are going to do some bookkeeping in order to to kill some a, a small uh, families that tries to be some cardinal as well. So for example, here we want the, I don't know, the covering of null equal to theta one. So in the iteration, we are going to, to, in, to use some sub-forcings of random forcing, which I always denote by B, of size less than theta one, okay? So by sub-forcing, so I, I mean that it's a, well, it has to have this form, that it, there should be like some model, a small model of a surface fragment of CFC, a transitive model of size less than theta one, and the forcing that we use at this stage, let's say some Q alpha, whatever, will be the V, the version of V of the model, okay? So it, it will be just uh, 
random forcing restricted to some model of size uh, less than theta 1. Okay. So then we, for example, use this in the iteration. Also, we use the same type of supposets of Heckler forcing. So Heckler forcing is the standard CCC poset that adds a dominating real. Here will be of size less than theta 2. And also the same, but with the amoeba. The amoeba forcing of size less than theta 0. And then we alternate. Okay, and we alternate using some bookkeeping argument in order that if we have some, um, let's say in the case of the dominating, if we have some small, uh, some family uh, in, the, in some intermediate step, we have some family of reals of size less than theta 2, then later will appear some, some sub forcing of Heckler forcing that adds a real dominating this small family, right? This will be done in order to make a b bigger than or equal than theta 2, okay? For example, right? So then the feature, and well, we use only these three type of posits, like alternating them and doing this bookkeeping. Um, so now, what does this iteration satisfy? I'm not going to explain this because it's very technical, but then this, for example, this will be theta 1, eventually different goods, and theta 2, eventually different good. So this is with respect to this H, and this is well for omega to the omega, OK? Because we use uh, small forcings, also because we use some, this is the big one, for example, this is sigma centered, etc. OK? So as they are like very good, and also is theta 0 good for some other relation, which is localizing slaloms that I didn't explain, okay? So because it's very good, then in the extension, we will have that the additivity of null is less than or equal than theta zero. Theta zero, um, the covering of null is less than or equal than theta one. And because of the theta two, eventually different good, we will have that the uniformity of meager which is the corresponding cardinal to this relation is less than or equal than theta 2, okay? So we have this by preservation. Additionally, by the bookkeeping I express, actually we, we get the inequalities in here. Well, actually in the last one, I get B bigger than or equal than theta 2, so we have the quality also here. Now, finally, for lambda is because, okay, as we are very good for this relation, then we will have that the, the size of the iter it will at, at the end it will be forced that the size of the iteration uh, will be less than or equal than the d of the relation. And in this case, this d of the relation is the covering of meager. So that's how we leave the covering of meager. So this is, this is one example. Other example will be this. So this, for this, you can use almost the same iteration. You just change the length. The length should be uh, lambda times mu. Here is the, as an ordinal product, because this will have size lambda and cofinality mu. So that's why you get these two cardinals here, mu, when you additionally use the eventually different real forcing. So this is the canonical sigma center poset that adds a eventually different real over the ground model. So, but note that for these two models, we, we can separate a lot on the, on the left, but on the right, we are very limited. Actually, with simple iterations, we can only get two values on the right. But, ad but additionally, if we just make the techniques a little bit more complicated, we can have an example like this, which actually gives three different values on the right, okay? So now what I found out is that for this, we can use something that is called a matrix iteration. So a matrix iteration was a technique introduced by Blas and Shelat to prove that, 
I forgot which direction was uh, ah, u, u less than d with large continuum. So it's a way to construct a finite support iteration. At the end, it will be a finite support iteration, but you will do it like using two dimensions. So in that way, it looks like a, yes, like a matrix. Okay. So I will change this one. So I will explain how the construction will be and then explain, try to explain some technicalities. Maybe I will uh, skip a lot of things to not make it very technical as well. So you start, okay, you start with your grand model. Let's say your grand model, you call it B00. And you perform a finite support iteration of length kappa, okay? Um, mm -hmm. So this is a finite support iteration such that, uh, for example, if we are here in the B0 uh, alpha model, then here to B0 alpha plus one, we just use co-enforcing. A finite support iteration of co-enforcing up to kappa, okay? So then we generate some, some model heels, uh, kappa models here. Here was plus one. And we do it this way. So now that we have these vertical models, well, finally here it will be B0 kappa. Then uh, by recursion, we build a finite, for each of the models, we build an horizontal finite support iteration. So we are going to define them recursively for all of the models. And there, there will be uh, finite support iterations that will be embedded relatively one into the other, I mean, when you go above, okay? So what's the, the way to define this iteration here? So on one hand, you want this mu part there, so for this mu part, you can use the eventually different real forcing. So if we are in some, for example, here B0 alpha, we use the eventually different real forcing to add an eventually different real uh, over the model B0 alpha. And we do this with respect to each of the models. So for example, here will be with respect to B0 zero, zero, and here it will be respect to B0 kappa, okay? Then this is one step. Now the next step, we want to somehow increase D, make D equals to kappa. So for this, we use uh, the forcing that adds a dominating real Heckler forcing, but the version that we use will be quite restricted. It will be restricted in the following way. So if you, for example, if we are here in some column, let's say Xi, okay? Um, for this, for this uh, Xi, we are going to choose some height. Some height will that we will call, I don't know, T0 Xi. So it will give some function that gives some T Xi below kappa, okay? So it choose some, some model here, some model uh, B, B Xi, T of Xi, okay? So then the point is now from the model here, from B0, B, sorry, B Xi comma zero, and up to the point here above, we, we just use the trivial forcing to extend. So here we use the trivial forcing in the next model trivial, the next model we extend trivially, that, that means no extension, but it still we write it, until this height tick side that we choose. Now when we go to the next model to be C um, T C plus one, here we use uh, eventually, here we add an eventually different, uh, sorry, a dominating real, but we add a dominating real o only over this model, like not over all the models above, but on only over this model below. So it will be the version of B from the model big C, T of C. And from the models on until you get to the top to be C comma kappa, 
you use the same posit. Stop the line. You use the same posit xc txc. That means not the version of kappa, but the version of this height here that was specified. Okay. And we alternate this process. Okay, and this will give parallel finite support iterations. And what we want to do is to get to an iteration of length. It will be um, kappa times mu when this is an ordinal product. Okay. So all these iterations have this length. Length kappa times mu, uh, sorry, yes, kappa times mu. Size kappa, cofinality mu. Okay. So now what I don't need to explain, well, I only need to explain what? Why, why B is mu and why this is kappa. Okay, because the rest follows from the techniques that I, s that I explained before. So what happens here is, okay, we actually made a finite support iteration that makes this coin here and this coin up to kappa and then this other stuff that we described here with intermediate models, okay? So then first, now why we will have, for example, um, B less than or equal than mu. How, we did, how do we get this? Uh, sorry, bigger than equal, bigger than or equal. So we have to prove that any, any family of size uh, less than mu has to be dominated by some real, okay? So then when we use these uh, steps, we call dxi the dominating real that we add there. So the claim will be that <coughs> that if you have a, fun, a family <coughs> or in your final extension, uh, kappa mu comma kappa, yeah, of size less than mu, then this family will be dominated by some of the size. Okay, so there is some xi below kappa mu such that f is dominated by the, func the function dxi, okay? So each small family will be dominated by something like this provided the following. So as I said, for any column we are going to choose some t, okay? So we have this function t that goes from kappa mu to kappa such that, okay, for some of this, it will choose a t of psi, okay? It will choose a, a height in kappa. So what we require of this function, it's only that for any alpha less than kappa, the pre-image, I mean the collection of, of objects with image alpha is cofinal is cofinal in, in this domain kappa mu. So provided that we will get this claim. So why is that so? So first if you start with a family of sizes than mu, then this family will be will appear in some intermediate extension. Okay? It will be in some intermediate extension because this uh, iteration has length cofinality mu. And also vertically the same will happen. So this is some technical result that appears in uh, uh, Blas and Shellas matching iteration paper that every time you have a real over here, the real has to appear in some part below. So this also happens here. So as this kappa, of course, is larger than mu, then we will have that this family F will be in some intermediate step over here. I don't know. Now let me just erase this and I'll change and it will, the, it will appear in some B eta comma alpha, okay? It will appear in some step here, beta B eta comma alpha, the family will be around here. So then as at alpha this set is cofinal, it means that we can find a column, um, 
afterwards such that this T ox i is at the same height, is at height alpha. But then it means that our family will be here and then this D xi that dominates this family then will work, okay? So then because of this then we have B uh, bigger or equal than mu, but additionally this gives a dominating family. Why, what we are saying here is that these D size are dominating, so it means that D will be less than or equal to the size of the length of the iteration if we do this sufficiently enough. So the length of the iteration is kappa mu and the size of this is kappa. So D is less than or equal than kappa, okay? Now the final part will be to get the D bigger than or equal than kappa. And for this, there is an additional argument. For this argument, we have to look at now what the models that we have here in some column, let's say B kappa times mu comma alpha. We have to look at the models of the column, okay? So now for D bigger than or equal than kappa, then we want to prove that any family of size less than kappa cannot be dominating. Okay, so we start with a family of reals of size less than kappa. So as this thing has a size, uh, well, yes, we have kappa models here and any real here appears in an intermediate part below, then it means that this family of size less than kappa should appear in some intermediate stage below in here, okay? And then there should be some real in the next step in B, kappa mu alpha plus one, which is unbounded over this model that doesn't, let, that doesn't get dominated by the reals from this model, from or in particular the reals from where it started from. So then this following will, the, the following will happen. So the key point here is to use the Cohen reals that we added here. So let's say that as we use Cohen forcing here, we call, I don't know, for this uh, stage alpha, we call the coin, f the coin real that we add, we call it uh, C, C alpha, right? So C alpha has the property that is not, uh, is unbounded over the model B0 alpha. It means that no, no real from B0 alpha cannot dominate this. And the point is then to use the two parallel iterations that we have here at the height alpha and the height alpha plus one in order to preserve the property that this real is unbounded over the following models here. And then at the end, what we want to achieve is that this coin real here is unbounded over the reals here. So it means that, yes, it escapes, no, no dominating family will be here, okay? So now this is, th that's a more technical approach, okay? For example, the eventually different real forcing that we are using in these two things. So eventually different real forcing is less than or equal to star good. That's proved by Miller, okay? So as this is good, there is some argument that allows to, to preserve that this is unbounded over the next model. And now using these other models, that can also be preserved. That is from results of uh, York Brentley and Vera Fisher when they, yes, use matrix iterations also to prove consistency results about cardinal invariance. And then preservation of an unbounded real is preserved at limit stages of parallel iterations and then you, you may be done, okay? I was very brief here, but as I said, I want to avoid to be super technical on this stuff. Even I write sliders on this, but I, well, I skip it. So this can be used to produce some quite different models. So look that this is this almost the same model as before, but in, in the model before we only had here LF1. But you can use in the same matrix, you can add bookkeeping arguments in order to get here other two values and that will happen thanks thank to, to the preservation properties that I introduced at the beginning. Another example will be this. Okay, the same we can separate three on the, on the right hand side, which was, well, the challenge here. Now we want to think, okay, how about having four or even five, how to separate the right hand side like very well, okay? So Martin et al. Uh, uh, happened to do this, but the thing is that the, the, 
technique that they use is, um, well, these creature forcing that usually produces something that is omega omega bounding. So as that will be omega omega bounding, this will be equal to LF1. So this technique with, with creatures may not work to obtain a model of this. So we wonder, okay, which techniques should we use in order to have a separation like this? So this is something we don't know. Okay. So now we will want to turn uh, to other example. Now quite recently, there is a work uh, with Martin Goster and Saharan Shela, and we achieved the following in Chihon's diagram. So we could separate all the left hand side from the right hand side. Okay. So what, as I explained in the examples before, there was some separation, but this was equal to, to the uniformity of Meager. But now then how to separate everything from the left to the right? So new ideas are needed here and not ideas related with, um, well, more ideas about preservation. So for, for this model, you can use a finite support iteration but an additional, well, you have to be careful in other stuff that I will explain. Oops. All right. So let's even think about a more simple statement. B, the consistency of BLF1 less than uniformity of Meager equals mu, less than the covering of Meager equals lambda. So the core of the problem will be solved these two inequalities simultaneously, okay? So one idea to do this will be what? Um, perform a finite support iteration of length lambda such that at each step we use a sub forcing of, of the eventually different of size less than mu, okay? By a bookkeeping procedure. So as you do this by bookkeeping and, wait a second, um, yes, I think it's fine. So as you do this by bookkeeping, then you get that mu is less than is less than equal than the uniformity of Meager, but also because you have the first mu coin reals preserved as a non-Meager family, then you actually have equality. And also by the preservation theorems before we have that the covering of Meager is lambda. So the problem is B equals L F1. Okay. So the backdrop the problem here is that well, even though that the eventually different real forcing as a full potential is less than equal star good, okay, it means they preserve uh, unbounded families. It doesn't happen for sub forcings. That is, there is a result of Paulikowski where he constructed such a subforcing where that actually adds a dominating real. So as we cannot guarantee that subforcings are quite good to preserve uh, unbounded families, then we have to find out how to take care of that. Okay. So I will just like very, very, very briefly say then what, what, what will happen there, okay? So the key point in, in this result, in, Mi in Miller's result, that the eventually different forcing is good, is that you, whenever you have a sequence in the forcing, this should be like a very uniform sequence, let's say uniform, whatever that means, then you can take uh, define some limit with respect to an ultra filter. So you start with a D and non principal ultra filter on omega. Okay? You fix a non principal ultra filter on omega 
And then you have a way to define limits using that ultra filter. The point is that these limits will always force that the set of natural numbers such that Pn is in the generic will always be infinite. Okay. And this is like the key, the key part in order to prove that the forcing is good or that, that it can preserve unbounded families. So then the idea is, is to extend this now to, to iterations. So at the same time that we make an iteration, we define sequences of ultra filters that allows to take um, ultra filter limits uh, coordinate by coordinate, okay? I am like saying this very briefly because I don't think I have the time to give all the details of this. But the point is that, yes, you, and now in the iteration, when you are defining the iteration, you make sure that you have some special families, well, some special sequences that actually are countable delta systems when you can define limits and have this similar property. And then with this property, you can guarantee that you, could, that you preserve uh, Aleph 1 less than equal star unbounded families. So that's the key point of the thing. It's a very, well, I, I will say technical construction. I mean, just looking at the slides, it looks ugly. So I just wanted to save that time for you. So just to finish now, um, we wanted additionally to get that the covering of MIGER, I mean in the same model we want to know how the covering of MIGER can be less, get additionally that this could be strictly less than the continuum. So this we don't know because then, I don't know, that there is some, some part of, of this work, I don't know, that this cardinal here behaves like, like a cardinal on the right hand side. So in order to separate three of here, it means that we should make a matrix iteration, but also include the ultra filter limits in a matrix iteration. And well, that, that looks a bit hard, I think. Maybe it's possible, I, st well, I still don't know. Okay, so, so I, I'm done here. So thank you for listening. No, no, no. No, we are not using templates here. Well, I, I will expect more the first part, and I will um, personally do it more for the first. I, I will believe everything can be separated. That's just a belief, but maybe I'm not right. Well, I, I will not conjecture that far, but at least that there is, there will be some, some part that you can separate everything, like consistent to that one. Maybe, I don't know, at least one example, but now too far, I don't know that this will be the maximum of whatever happens here, this, that I will, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that will happen, for example. Yeah, but, but yes, the, the main motivation, as you pointed out, is, is to develop new forcing techniques, or at least personally, this is what I want to do, because I like forcing oh, very much. So that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, I don't know. David, do you have another question? So what about creeping and splitting? A ripping, um, I know that a splitting, you can put it, I mean, as long as this is, not very small, you can put a splitting between the covering of null and, and B. Because the forcing that you use to increase the splitting is this Mathas forcing with ultra filters, and as this is sigma center, then it has preservations for these two cardinals. And on the other hand, uh, when you use Heckler forcing, when the full Heckler forcing, you will preserve splitting families. 
some omega splitting families or well depend on the cardinality on some cardi on some cardinal but if, but you cannot but if you use subalgebras of of Heckler forcing then you may not preserve it it's, it's something I don't know maybe it's unknown I don't know and ripping will be well the dual thing What is the sorry? The record, the maximum number of uh, different values on the diagram. I think it's six. Six. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, Tilo. Yeah, sorry. I think I, uh, I, I one point I can't pay attention to. The cardinal starts with regular. Ah, I see. So um, usually the one that is the continuum doesn't need to be regular. But you need, for example, for example here. I mean, when, whenever you use a, a bookkeeping argument, you need something like this, right? So for example, lambda that is the continuum doesn't need to be regular, but here as you use some bookkeeping for mu, then you need the lambda to the less than mu is equal to lambda. That's the only requirement for, for only lambda, which is the only one that cannot be regular. That may not be regular, but for the others, you need regularity. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. In this work, is not necessary, but implicitly there is something like that here. I will. I mean, it depends. So, but uh, as you can guess, I don't know. We are we are in two models here, and let's say this is generated by a forcing extension from this. So there is a quotient here. So we don't care about the quotients in this construction, or particularly, but. Implicitly, there are things. For example, there are parts when you use the same posit here, right? So then it means that the extension from here to here will be just the product of these two, for example, the product of this quotient with P. That's like some sort of commutativity, but in general, it's not used for the matrix. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.